All right, what's going on guys? It's your boy Scrub here back again with another video. Hope you guys are having a great day. I know I am and today I've got a story time about arguably one of the worst bosses I've ever heard about in my time running this channel. All right, trust me. I've had some bad ones myself, but then there's next level people that come in on the first day of work and like demand that you ask to go to the bathroom and stuff. Regardless, I figured it would be a story time that y'all would really enjoy. So uh, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so like I said, it's a story time that was sent in to me uh, by a subscriber, and basically this dude's manager was like the worst boss of all time, you know. And we're gonna call her Charlene for the rest of the story time just because it fits. It, it's basically like a Karen-esque name, but uh, without being Karen itself, because I think when they are the manager, it's no longer a Karen, you know. You gotta come up with a different name for it. That being said, Charlene herself was a new manager for this dude, and he was working in a warehouse at the time. And he admits that that, like, working in a warehouse was not the most fun job in the world. It definitely wasn't something glamorous that he loved. But with the manager they had before Charlene, it wasn't that bad because he would, like, let them put headphones in, listen to podcasts, listen to music, whatever, go to the bathroom when they felt like it. Basically, as long as all their work got done on time and packages weren't late leaving the warehouse, they were allowed to do whatever. And, uh, obviously, in my opinion, that's, like, the best management style. I think when people get, like, micromanaging and over the top, and start demanding that, you know, you give them 12% of your paycheck in order to pay homage to the greatness of the manager, and they demand that you, you know, you have to ask before you go to the bathroom. It's just a little much. I think if everybody can be listening to their music, their podcasts, and uh, still getting their work done while using the bathroom without asking, everyone wins, right? And if you treat people like adults and give them responsibility, they usually can handle it pretty well. Regardless, the manager that everybody loved ended up getting promoted to an even higher position, so they ended ended up uh, switching managers. And instead of promoting somebody that had already been on the staff, they ended up just bringing over a manager from another location. So, you know, they don't have like any experience with this new manager. They don't know the person. They just know that they're going to have a new boss. And on day one, Charlene introduces herself as her new manager and calls a meeting to talk to everybody. And she tells everyone that she had been, you know, watching for a little bit earlier that day from the uh, management window. And she's really not happy with a lot of the practice practices she's seen today and they're truly making her sick and are no longer going to be allowed. So first thing she does is she says no more headphones, all right? She's like the communication is being impeded by the headphones and so because of that we're just not allowed to wear them anymore. Which would be fair if they talked or communicated at all, but they didn't really ever do that. Basically the way it worked is everybody had this like iPad tablet thing, you know? And it would pop up with what they needed to move where, when it needed to be done by, and you would just kind of go and do your thing. Everybody just kind of had their jobs of what they had to do. And so for the most part, you didn't need to listen to the intercom. They didn't even have an intercom. And if you needed to reach a specific person or management needed to reach you, they could send you a message on the tablet. And everyone explained that, but she doubled down saying that like, you know, there's literally no reason for anyone to want to wear headphones at work. We are here to work and earn money. We are not here to listen to music. And the fact that you want to be able to do both at the same time is just absurd. You guys need to seriously get up and start working even harder because this is ridiculous that you expect to be paid for your hours while you're also listening to music at the same time. I don't think listening to music makes the work not be done though, you know, like they still deserve to get paid even if they're listening to music. These are the type of jobs that suck the most, you know, listen, like no one is saying that they're not gonna work hard, but if I have to pick between podcasts and like silence in the noise of a warehouse, I'm gonna pick podcasts every time. I don't know, maybe Maybe I didn't realize it's so foreign to people to be able to listen to stuff and work at the same time. I feel like most people are able to do that. You know, if anything, I feel like listening to music or a podcast while I work like makes me even more focused. Did Charlene never meet someone that does better on a test with music playing? Like, I, I don't know, man. I'm just not understanding how it's really going to impede their work that much. Maybe there's an employee that just gets a little bit too passionate about the music and instead of like moving stuff around the warehouse starts doing a flash mob dance. You know, I, I can't work. There's too much music playing playing. They're just like doing the worm in the alley. But none of these people who are working in the warehouse had ever seen that. And they're just kind of confused as to why she's so adamant that it gets banned. It just kind of feels like she's doing something to like take away the little joy they have at this job. Anyway, she ends up doubling down saying absolutely no more headphones. And everyone's like, all right, fine. You know, you are the boss at the end of the day. Like we just kind of do have to do what you say. And it's a really not popular choice. And somebody says that they don't like it. And her response to one of the employees being like, I don't like that you're 
Manning headphones is to tell them, well, I'm the manager and I didn't ask what you like because I'm in charge, so it doesn't matter and get back to work. So obviously that's just kind of the vibe off meeting one and definitely isn't a sign that this is going to be a very, very fun person to work for. And so everybody leaves the room and goes back onto the floor and instantly starts complaining, as you do. You know, if someone's yelling at you, taking away something fun, you're probably going to complain to your coworkers a little bit. And they're all just kind of like, I don't understand why she's so mad at the headphones because we haven't even had a full day to work yet. Like, she hasn't even seen how fast we get done. This warehouse was usually ahead of schedule on getting things done. So they just didn't understand why they were being punished when they performed better than like other warehouses that were at the same company. But whatever, after some complaining, they started trying to get back to work and everybody did get working. The only problem was time was just kind of like slowly dragging on, at least to the subscriber who sent this in to me. I mean, think about it. You've been listening to music and podcasts every day, all day at work, and then all of a sudden it's banned and you just kind of have to like sit and listen to silence. Obviously, time's going to move much slower. You know, you got to do what you got to do it's your job, but it's a change. And after about two hours on the floor in silence, the subscriber decided that he needed to use the restroom. You know, he was a little bit ahead of what he needed to be doing, just basically going the same speed as a normal day. And the rule always was with the old manager that like, as long as your work gets done on time, you can use the restroom. Why would you need to ask me? You're an adult. You know when you need to pee. I don't. Which to me kind of makes sense, right? Like outside of when you're in school, there's just no reason for adults to be asking to go to the bathroom because it's just like, just go to the bathroom. Anyways, he goes into the bathroom and he's not hiding in there or anything. He's just using the restroom when all of a sudden there starts to be some banging on the door, like gong, gong, gong. And so he says hello innocently because he doesn't think he's doing anything wrong, right? And on the other side of the door, he just hears Charlene go, hmm, who's in there? What do you think you're doing? Did I say? you could go to the restroom and he's sitting there confused and he answers the only way which he can which is like well I'm in here because I had to use the restroom you know he doesn't even address the like why didn't you ask because he feels like it's obvious but her response is like well why are you in the bathroom doing that which is just an insanely dumb question bro like why do you think he's in the bathroom to do a to do a Yahtzee like to do a crossword puzzle like what what do you mean so he says because I needed to use the bathroom and you know he's a little confused in his tone and Charlene's response to him saying he needed to use the bathroom is like well why didn't you come find me and ask me to use the restroom and he answers honestly he's like well look I didn't know that I had to ask to use the bathroom I thought I was just allowed to go I'm sorry that's kind of how it was before so I have no reason to assume that I would have to ask you know I wasn't trying to be mean I just had to use the bathroom so I went to use the bathroom I didn't think it was going to be a big deal and obviously I feel like that's a reasonable answer but Charlene's not taking it no 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 no. Well, how was I supposed to know where you were? What if there was a fire in the bathroom right now and we didn't know you were in there? And he just goes, well, I would come out of the bathroom. And he wasn't trying to be a smart aleck, you know, it was just kind of like, how, what do you mean? And so she cuts him off when he says that and is like, stop talking back to me. And he's not trying to talk back. He just kind of clarifies. He's like, I'm just not understanding why I have to ask to use the restroom. And keep in mind, it's even more awkward because all of this is going down while like she's on the other side of the bathroom door and he's sitting in the bathroom. She couldn't even have waited to yell at him until he like walked out of the bathroom. No, no, no. You just kind of got to start arguing through the door. But regardless, he ends up finishing up in the bathroom. He walks out and she's kind of standing there tapping her foot, arm crossed, you know, just the most irritated look she could possibly give, looking like he himself just single-handedly threw off the warehouse by nine hours. You need to come with me to the office now. And so she takes him into the office and closes the door and she's like, you are not to do anything in this building without asking for my permission first. Do you understand? I'm talking about the bathroom. I'm talking about opening a door. I don't care what it is. You need to ask for my permission first. I'm the manager in charge of this building and the only way this is going to work is if you guys respect me and are willing to work with me. Honestly, that just kind of sounds like a, a speech from a dictator. Like, you have to ask before you open a door. And he kind of starts to explain himself, like, listen, I wasn't trying to be disrespectful or disappear. We just have never had to ask to use the restroom before as long as we're ahead of schedule, so I assumed it would be the same. I understand that, you know, that's on me. I shouldn't make assumptions, but it, it's not gonna happen again, and I'm sorry. Which is basically, like, you know, all he can really say in this situation beyond being like, this is ridiculous and I quit. And I 
think that in and of itself is a solid apology. You know, I personally would hate to have to ask to use the restroom, so to even apologize at all, good for you, man. I feel like that's a solid W. But regardless, it didn't seem like Charlene appreciated his apology at all. If anything, you know, she just wanted him to be like, yes, your liege, I will ask going forward, yes, at once. You know, a little bit of an explanation as to what happened. That wasn't what she was asking for. No, no, no. She just wanted to get straight to uh, you being wrong. That's just not good enough. I don't care if you didn't have to ask before. You do understand that I'm a new manager, right? That means that I wasn't here before. Just like being insanely condescending, explaining what new means, you know? So you need to ask for the new rules, okay? The rules that are in place now, because the old ones don't exist anymore. Now, do I need to repeat myself, or did your stupid little brain manage to hang on to that one? And listen, that just crossed the line. At that point, he's like, all right, I'm done. You know, the first day you're calling me an idiot for using the bathroom without asking, and like, screaming at me, calling me a moron, saying you're gonna have to repeat yourself because I'm so stupid. So he just decides to start arguing back at this point, and he's like, well, I'm just saying, if you need people at to work for you that like, have to ask to pee, then you clearly do want stupid employees, so you should get used to repeating yourself because that's basically what you're gonna have to do a lot and she's like excuse me and he's like yeah I'm just saying if you want people who literally can't work with sound people who can't pee on their own people who need to ask to open a door just like be prepared to be doing a lot of managing and repeating yourself and yelling at people you know I know you have more manager experience than me but it really sounds like you want stupid employees so consider this my two weeks notice I'm out of here after that because I don't really consider myself stupid and I don't want to work for somebody that wants stupid employees and at that point he turned to just start walking out of the office and Charlene wasn't too happy with that and she's like well if you're giving your two weeks like this then you might as well just quit and he turns around and goes are you sure like are you sure that you want me to do that and she's like yeah I think that you should quit you moron it's not like we need you here anyways and at that moment the person's like all right <laughs> okay all right I quit bye and she's kind of flabbergasted you know she's like wait what and he's like yeah okay I quit like you saying I should quit right right now because you don't need me. Fair enough, I quit. First day as manager had just fired someone for quote-unquote being a moron for using the bathroom. Definitely not a good look and even for all the employees left, they're going to be like, hey, why were you fired? And he's going to go use the bathroom and didn't want to have to ask to open the door. Probably not a great way to build up popularity with any of the workers left, but hey, dude, uh, you gave him the ultimatum. Might as well quit. He took you up on it and said, okay, then I quit. So he kind of just walks out of the office at that point and tells his co-workers, that he's just been let go. He's loved working with them all, but he's gonna have to go get another job now. And they're kind of like, wait, you're quitting right now? Like, you have to leave right now? And he's like, yeah, I just quit. They're telling me to leave. Like, I gotta go. And they're like, well, dude, you're kind of the only certified forklift operator in this section of the warehouse for the next four hours. And he's like, yeah, I know that, but she told me to quit. She said, I tried to give my two weeks and she said, I might as well just quit right now. So that's what I'm doing. I'm out. And so I guess the way this warehouse worked is like they had workers, but not all of them had had their forklift license and so this dude because this shift was in the middle of the day was the only one who was on like for that shift that had the ability to drive the forklift legally so on this particular shift her first shift she had managed to fire the only forklift operator that was there as for why you know was it disrespect was it anger no because the forklift operator needed to pee and had just gone to pee which I'm sure is not gonna hold up well with the owners of the warehouse and so he's like listen guys good luck you know um but if he could tell by that interaction, he knew they'd be looking for a new job soon, too. And as he's explaining that, like, good luck, she comes out of her office and sees that he's still standing there talking to them and just starts freaking out. She's like, you need to go right now. You're no longer an employee here. You have 20 seconds to start making your way off the premises or I'm going to call the police to escort you out. And the all the co-workers are confused because, you know, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. You're going to call the cops on him? Like, he hasn't even done anything. He's just calmly standing here. And all the co-workers that are seeing this interaction Action, start to tell her like he's just leaving he's just leaving it's okay there's no need to call the cops like it's good there's nothing bad going on and so then she turns on all the employees that were trying to defend him and starts being like well you guys are either loyal to that traitor over there and points at him or the company and everyone is like what he's a traitor and I have to pick sides I've always thought it's so funny when companies do this bro they'll be like you need to be loyal to the company or your co-workers I mean I don't know dude like the company's 
not going to be loyal to me, let's be honest. If tomorrow I got really sick and I was a liability, you'd probably fire me pretty quick. Companies aren't really loyal anymore. Why am I going to bend over backwards and like disown my friend because you fired him unfairly just because it's the company's choice? Maybe back in the day when companies had my back, there's a reason to do that. But let's be honest, no company's doing anything to have your back anymore. And so at that point, he just decides to walk out, though. He doesn't want to cause any more problems or drama for his co-workers. He doesn't want the cops called. He's just like, look, it's not their fault that the manager's on a power trip right now, you know? I don't want to cause any problems, and on top of that, I can just go home. Like, this is obviously all gonna blow up in their face in a little bit when they realize that they have no one to drive the forklift for the next, like, four hours. So whatever, I'll leave and avoid the drama. And so he gets in his car and starts his drive home, and it takes him a little bit to get home, like 25 minutes. And by the time he's getting into his driveway at home, he looks at his phone, and there's like 15 missed calls from a number he doesn't recognize, along with a ton of of voicemails. And so he plays voicemail number one and he immediately recognizes the voice as Charlene. You know, they hadn't talked a lot, but it had yelled at him enough that morning for him to instantly recognize it. But the only thing that was really funny to him is like the screaming, angry tone that had been used on him all morning was gone and it was a total tone change. Not mad at all, just the nicest voice ever trying to be like as persuasive as possible. Oh, hey, I'm so sorry about that little argument we had, you know? You you should just come back. I didn't realize that you were the forklift operator we had on staff for this shift. And of course, he hadn't replied because he was driving, so it goes to the next voicemail. And the next voicemail is like a little bit angrier, you know, a little bit more, you need to come back. This is serious. And so he's just listening to these voicemails one after the other, and they just keep getting angrier and angrier and worse and worse, you know? Like she had tried playing good cop, but now bad cop was out. The gloves were off, and she's just threatening him. And the last one, she's like, you need to get back here right Right now, you're the forklift operator, and if you're not back here in 15 minutes, then you can just consider yourself fired. And he's like, all right, well, if I can consider myself fired, I'm pretty okay with that, considering the fact that you literally told me to quit. And on top of that, I just don't think that's a good way to get an employee to come back. Like, obviously, he has no desire to go back and work there, so he just ignored the voicemails, assuming they would figure it out. And they didn't call him anymore after that, so he assumed that they did, you know. I'm just saying, why would he want to go back to that? You're like, get back here or you're fired. It's like, man, I, uh, that sounds like a great work environment. I'd love to go back and deal with that for more, you know? And to make matters even better, he like went home and instantly ended up finding a job because he's a forklift operator and he lives in a place with a ton of warehouses and e-commerce facilities, so he's really in demand. And low-key, the internet's kind of cracked for that. Like, before this, getting a job was really hard. You just kind of had to eat your boss's crap for a bit unless you got like a recommendation or a hookup somewhere. But now, man, you got an in-demand skill, some certification that a lot of people need. The world is kind of your oyster, bro. You can just kind of be like, hey, dude, I don't want to deal with this. Trust me. There's 97 warehouses within three miles. I can go drive a forklift at any of them. I don't really understand Charlene's management style either, you know? Maybe that's why I'm not a manager. I just wouldn't feel the need to make people, like, ask me to go to the bathroom. I do not want to be in control of that at all, bro. The last thing I want to do is be in charge of people, period, but especially to, like, be that in charge, you know? <laughs> Getting a text every 12 seconds. Can I, can I open the door? Like, yeah, bro, you can. Go for it. I don't know, man. I just feel like your workers will do better if you treat them like an adult. Like, if, if people were talking to me like Charlene, I'd be mad confused. Are you my teacher or my boss? Like, I don't want to have to ask to pee or listen to my headphones. As long as my work's getting done and we're all getting paid, that's all that should really matter at the end of the day, you know? Moral of the story, though, bosses really do make the job. If you get stuck with a crappy boss, it can just really screw things up, even if you used to enjoy the job, and you don't have to deal with that, you know? If a boss is going out of their way to like, make your life miserable, like, just quit. It's just not worth dealing with that type of stuff for 40 hours a week for the rest of your life, especially because currently there's a huge worker shortage. You know, hey, hey, it used to be you just kind of had to ride it out. But if they're going to, like, uh, treat you like that, dude, I promise you there's better options out there. Anyways, guys, I think that's going to going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, I would really appreciate you taking a second to press the like button. Let me know in the comments section down below what you thought. And of course, subscribe if you're new and turn on those notifications. If you really want to help me out, I'm going to go ahead and put a link to my Spotify show down in the description down below. I post there all the story times and some of my other content. So if you want to listen offline without music, whatever, or without gameplay, sorry, whatever floats your boat, the link to my Spotify show will be in the top of the description. Beyond that though, guys, you can also find a link to the merch store at the bottom of the description. It's pretty fantastic and you should definitely check it out and get yourself some. It's the coolest merch to ever exist in the history of the planet. And you should also use code 
Scrubby at the G Fuel checkout. Great way to get a discount on G Fuel, the best energy drink for gamers by gamers. And uh, yeah, on that note, guys, I think that'll really do it. Don't get anyone pregnant. If you do, make sure they're hot. And hopefully I'll see each and every single one of you guys next time with another video. I'm out. Peace.